so I developed uh, the MOOC Visualize in Japan, uh, which is a MITx, Harvard X joint project with John Dower of MIT, Andy Gordon of Harvard, and also Jennifer Weisenfeld of Duke. I incorporated the MOOC material uh, into my residential class in 2014, and it changed everything. It changed literally everything. And I continued to, to use it right up until my last offering, which was fall of 2016. Uh, before 2014, it was a very traditional class with lectures, PowerPoints, a little bit of student discussion. When I incorporated the MOOC material in 2014, um, I didn't anticipate any major changes. I simply said, why don't you look at these video lectures we just produced and see what you think, think about them. Uh, and what I realized right away was that students would come into class and they would have a lot of knowledge, which was not the case before. So I would ask, you know, so when did Perry come to Japan? 1853. Okay. When did Meiji era begin? 1868. Why did it begin? Blah, blah, blah. So, my goodness. Uh, you know, I had a whole set of PowerPoints, which I had created from years of teaching. I did not show a single PowerPoint. I, for uh, 70 minutes, I just ask them questions, just to see if I can find something that they didn't know. They knew the whole thing. And I said, gee, this is, uh, this is different. <laughs> and without realizing it, without, I, I didn't even know what a flipped class was. I just did a flipped class. I did not lecture for a single minute. It was just question, answer, discussion, you know, posing, little deeper questions for students to discuss. And uh, I was absolutely, absolutely stunned that just in this one class, the way I teach changed fundamentally. So by uh, having flipped the class, uh, one very concrete thing that came out of it, uh, this is MIT, so one of the students was actually uh, getting some data on this. Um, so there were a couple times when I had a traditional lecture uh, class, because I had to introduce something. And uh, this student uh, uh, timed me, and she found that I was speaking 80%, students 20%, okay? which is, for a traditional lecture class, that's not bad. And then, so she told me that, and I said, well, look, why don't you uh, do the same thing when uh, we do the discussion? So she did that, and she found that it was 50-50. And qualitatively, it's just completely different, completely different. Remember, uh, we had uh, uh, a bunch of visitors from Japan, second week of the class, and I was doing the you know, interactive uh, style, and they came up to me and said, uh, so how many months have you been teaching this class? <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> it's quite remarkable. I mean, just the sheer amount of knowledge the students gain from this new way of teaching is it, it just, it's you cannot compare it to the previous one. You know, we like to lecture. We all like to lecture. Uh, and I miss lecturing. <laughs> A lot of faculty members who flip class tell me this, you know. So in, in their sort of quiet moment, you know, in the corner of their room, you know, they whisper, I miss lecturing. But we all know that this flipping class makes it so much more effective. What's really important is to have good material for students to study ahead of class. And I strongly recommend video. Video is a very uh, rich source of knowledge. And if you combine that with reading, you'll be amazed at how much students bring into, into class. And uh, as uh, uh, one of my colleagues, Rona Gibson, who has flipped uh, her materials class, uh, has said the reason why flipped class is so effective is that students touch the same material several times. Okay? Uh, 
once when they are viewing it before coming to class, and second time when we're discussing, discussing it, and third time when they do a P-set based on it. That's why it's so effective. Yeah. I think lecturing is going to go the wayside of uh, blackboards.